going to say something that gets us thrown in jail because people happen to be offended. We are live again with another Pangburn Hangout. Today's Tuesday, so that means it's my my day. I get to run the conversation and pick the topic. Uh, and uh, today I wanted to talk about inspiration, just in general. What inspires everyone? Uh, I'll talk about some of the things that inspire me and hopefully uh, get into some interesting discussions about what inspires all of you or anyone that stops by. And, uh, you know, g- g- kind of talk about what I mean when I when I speak philosophically about the inspirational I- inspiration meters that exist within each of us, the artistic and scientific inspirational meters. Um, I was on the uh, Jesse Lee Peterson show today. It was a great conversation again. You know, although Jesse and I uh, think very differently about many aspects of reality, uh i think he's a he's a he engages in good faith discourse and and it's hard to find people that do that um uh that aren't being truthful they're purely speaking from an ad- agenda i i think uh i think jesse lee peterson isn't putting on a show he's he's very truthful about how he feels although i i do think he's wrong about quite a few things uh we do disagree but um, yeah, I, I value people who are able to be truthful and, you know, not pandering to, to a particular type of audience or anything like that. There's a big difference between someone like Jesse Lee Peterson and someone like Steven Crowder, who, you know, seems to be driven by what his audience wants as opposed to what's in his own mind. So, yeah, uh, anyways, let's get into it. How's it going, Scott? What's up, man? How's it going? Oh, it's going good. Going Dude, what good. Is, what is that program, man? You got like that intro and outro shit I just saw. It's like, oh, damn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that, like, like, a way to, like do uh, active animation or whatnot during live shows. Well, it's just you can build these scenes into Twitch or OBS, whatever software you're using. But you can build these scenes. But, but those are... Um, uh like the first one is a video compilation just for the test your skepticism call-in show which will be starting this sunday again guys uh nice. for 2021 um but uh but yeah and then the the following one there's a um oh what's it called render forest i think it's called render forest is a website where you can turn your logos into animations um oh, that's cool yeah and that's that's one that i um uh really liked for the pangburn logo so yeah yeah because normally that's a pretty expensive process like if you oh, go yeah. with like somebody who's just like doing it from scratch you know oh i know <laughs> it's yeah like, oh, it's, it's good, like six seven hundred bucks oh no dude i paid 25 dollars for that like 25 dollars oh, nice. clean and it, and it li- literally you can you can put some together very quickly uh you know as long as you can do your own basic editing and make sure you're uploading like transparent images and things like that it's 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 pretty and, awesome and basically you're just uploading your uh logo as yep. like what a uh like a vector format yeah, so yeah can it, take it. yeah like a png format is enough for that yep. program oh and, really okay yeah yeah and and it's like it's amazing they have some really cool things i i also use i use uh render forest for like the Matt Dillahunty Dinesh D'Souza conversation where there was kind of the cool uh, thing of both 
of their pictures coming together and creating this kind of Armageddon crash. Uh, Like the flames and all that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) So they have like a lot of options. Yeah, all that, all that shit. There's, there's like, um, and there's stuff for everything. Like if you're, if you're running a daycare or something, they have like kids balloons, uh, the uh, logos and things. They basically have an option for everything. So. The yeah, Jeffrey it's, it's Epstein cool. daycare. <laughs> <laughs> wow. The, where, where future investment happens. Um, sc- scooper uh, sketchy. Geez. How's it going, brother? Yo, what's up, bro? Yo, yo. You said, uh, you said in the chat, you come from the Jesse Lee Peterson world. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, uh, what brought you to Jesse Lee initially? I don't know. I just saw him on, uh, on YouTube one time. Oh, okay. That one where he uh, debated that reporter, like that really old one. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You seen that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Telemundo reporter. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, yo, who's this guy? <laughs> he's, a, he's a funny guy, man. It, Jesse uh, yeah. Jesse kills me. I, I love wa- watching through his uh, compilations and highlights. He, he's yeah, a, he's beta. A, beta. He black. <laughs> Black. <laughs> <laughs> he black. He black. Amazing. Radical fat black lesbians. <laughs> lesbians. Les- lesbians. <laughs> there's also the uh yeah, so they're, so they're they're beyond lesbian when he says it was when he says oh, they're yeah. lesbians, are they beyond lesbians? Lesbian. Like, yeah. My favorite my actual my favorite Jesse Lee Peterson episode is when he goes to the slut walk. Uh, where it's like a, a you know oh I've seen that yeah. It, it, yeah he and he's walking up to all these women and he's like are you a slut <laughs> and they're like and they're like yeah I'm a slut you're a slut we're all slut he's like no I'm not a slut a man can't be a slut well then, well, then what are you I'm a slut maker <laughs> <laughs> oh man that was a good uh... <laughs> what a what a troll. Um, I know. So I'd, I'd, I think I'd like him less if he didn't do that. Cause it's like the whole, like he plays in that whole machismo thing a bit too much. And yeah. that's where I like, yeah. sort of like, uh, like, dude, calm down. Like you could be fucking, you'd be a lot better if you didn't just go into that. Like, I don't know. Well, it's funny if you, if you look at this, how his Easy. audience talks about anyone <clears throat> that disagrees with them, they'll just automatically call them beta. Uh, yeah. So yeah, yeah, and yeah. and of course we're just I that that's just the people chat. that comment on the YouTube videos, which obviously isn't the the core of his following. But I just see that yeah, you know the people that take what you know his comedy to the extreme, and they're like every single thing is a beta. It's like if someone yeah. if, if they see a dog that looks at them funny, <laughs> beta. It's like <laughs> dude when you when you when you had the when you had the talk with him, it was on the YouTube chat. It was literally like every third or fourth comment was beta. <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah, Jesus was Christ, funny. man. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, really it's, after you made a certain, a certain comment about something, I forgot what you said. And that's when everybody started saying you're a beta. <laughs> I, th- I think i mean anytime you push back at anything that he says i think the audience <laughs> is just going to call you a beta you know so if, yeah. if you're not in complete agreement they're going to be like oh he's a beta oh, he's a beta that's <laughs> why he's his mama's yeah, boy so like like you're talking about? what's that i think it was after like you were talking about the machismo thing yeah yeah i think it was yeah. after that yeah, uh, yeah, um, you know a lot of a lot of the uh, a lot of men out there who who think that it's you know th- that machismo is the way to like be a man. They're the ones that are so beta that they can't bring themselves to buy a margarita if they really want want one, and their other uh, buddies are buying a beer at the bar. They're just yeah. too beta <laughs> to be able to buy the fucking margarita. <laughs> now that's beta <laughs> yeah. I, I, also, I also think you have you have to the like the essence of people living vicariously through other people calling people betas so they you know they're yeah, like yeah. oh well yeah but we can call other people betas right. <laughs> so they feel good <laughs> <laughs> yeah man yeah i think that those people are a little too extreme 
Yeah, but that's sort of the thing. Like, I always question. I I always have an issue when, so say, a conversation starts and somebody wants to use a term like beta. The the reason that they're using it <laughs> is that they can disregard what that per- person is saying. Yeah, they can say, "Oh, I don't I don't need to listen to what they're saying." They're a beta, yeah. so like, oh, and and that's <laughs> to me that is a fundamental issue in conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you um. Uh, but, but I get it. Like I get the comedy aspect. It's like if someone comes totally. into the room room with like, and, and they're, they're a guy that comes into a room and they're like, they have to list their 14 labels of who they are and what their sexual yep. orientation is and all this stuff. It's like, yeah, beta. like I get it. I get yep. the, the comedy of it. But yeah, I, well, again, it's sort of the I, thing. I, like, yeah. like I remember like people like when the term totes came out. <laughs> totes, we made yeah. a bunch of like friends like we're like that is the stupidest thing we've ever heard so we started using it ironically and then you know yeah. what happens after a certain amount of time you end up just fucking using it like an yeah. asshole yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yep totes my goats brother <laughs> yeah I, I, and then at some point you like, you have to stop it like oh my god i'm okay enough of that <laughs> let's move on <laughs> so scooper uh let me ask you this what inspires you inspires me uh championship pizza yeah i mean pizza's huge man yeah. i the pleasure i get out so of where, pizza is just well where are you f- pizza. well where are you from pizza. what's championship pizza yeah what is that by the when way you're a winner and you eat pizza afterwards <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? I can relate to that. I can relate to winning, uh, you know, ho- hockey championships and having the big fucking yeah. pizza party after, and just <laughs> that pizza never tastes better. Exactly. Well, I gotta say, <laughs> where, where, where are you? Where are you from, Scooper? Georgia. 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 Because I, I do have to say, there's like certain places where like you can get pizza that's far better than others. You know. True. Yeah. True. And that's, yeah. You know I've what? had some pretty bad pizza in my time. <laughs> Where it's like, oh, yeah. oh God, Dude, God damn pizza it. Is by far the worst. <laughs> Where are you going? Georgia State? Uh, I'm in high school right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Where do I want to move? Got fired. What, uh, what are your favorite topics? Topics? Well, classes, Topic? yeah. Oh, uh, classes. Um, ROTC and weight training. Weight training and oh, uh, sorry, what was the first one? ROTC. ROTC. Oh, what yeah, is ROTC. that? It's like a military class. Oh, okay. Yep. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, history as well. I like history. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. What is what is? Uh, uh ROTC. Reserve uh, Officers Training Corp. Yeah, yeah. So it's like to, so it's sort of like something you go in into high school to start to learn the the ropes of what it is to be an officer in the military. Interesting. What it is. So you start you you start learning like color guard and all these kind of things and. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. It's pretty much a leadership class. Yep. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Like every uh, summer we go to this camp and uh, we do a lot of stuff. We go, uh, we go, we go, uh, what's it called? Rappelling. Uh, we do, uh, we do canoeing and whatever. Oh, cool. A bunch of games and stuff. It was really fun. Do they actually bring drill sergeants in? Yeah. For those? People are yelling. Do they? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but they're, 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 they're they got to be taking it pretty easy. I was, I was in the army, man, like, fuck. Dude, <laughs> you, go, you, you go, you go, you go, you go nine nine months with those guys. <laughs> What'd you <laughs> say, did, maggot? I did. <laughs> I did. I did OSUT. If you know what that is, one station unit training. So I did my basic okay. and AIT all in one shot with the same drill sergeants. Oh, okay, pretty cool. And that was fucking rough because in in basic training, you you basically move along this system of being like of getting flags you know you start with yeah. a red flag you move to a black i think blue and then finally gold 
but it was like for me there was always somebody that fucked up and we kept going back to the red phase over and over <laughs> so this is a basically we we're like the drill sergeants were treating us like it was the first week every fucking week <laughs> we were in for like fucking nine months and like god damn dude it was brutal so uh, uh what, 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 what up, Graham? hello gents um so let me get one more out of you, Scooper. Uh, what uh, what else inspires you? God, I guess. Uh, what God? Yahweh. Okay. Oh Jesus! Yeah, God. Why? <laughs> how, how about like? How about like? Do you ever do you ever listen to a song and feel like? overcome by like oh man whatever is going on there that makes me that makes me feel certain things that i can't put my finger yeah, on definitely yeah what what artist Art, movies. what artist would you say uh metallica nice dude oh. I, ride always... the, get a little bit of ride the lightning <laughs> yeah yeah man I'm what's your favorite that. album is it ride or is it uh is it black or is it Poorly quoted, man. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody likes that. Album. <laughs> what was that, Scooper? You, Scooper, you're you're a little bit uh, muffled. Uh, is there a way you can turn your mic up a bit, possibly? Oh, I got you. Yeah. Well, I already, I had it turned on max. I think already. We can turn him. I didn't. I didn't say anything, so we mm. can turn him up. Um, I mean, I'll just I'll just turn you up personally. Okay. What about uh, what about you, Grim? What inspires you? What inspires me? Yeah. Mm. Fatherhood. Yeah. Yep. Having kids is the most inspirational thing I've ever done. It's given me purpose. As somebody who came out of depression and suicidal tendencies and those things, it's uh, it, it's given me a reason to live. Mm. And how old are your kids? They're like two and two and uh, five, right? 14, 6, and 3. Oh, 14, 6, and 3. God damn. Yep. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, my little girl just turned 18, and she's an asshole. And I'm like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I'm like oh, this parenting thing sort of sucks right now. <laughs> my 14-year-old is, is an absolute gem. No complaints. She doesn't have any sass. Uh, she's oh, actually, yeah. She's actually Christian herself, um, and she wants to work with nonprofits when she gets older. Yeah, my my little girl when she was fourteen was amazing, you know, and like she's still awesome. She's you know she wants to go to school to be a doctor, and you know she's very she works in or goes and helps with like homeless centers and like feeds homeless people, but she doesn't want to have anything to do with her parents, you know. <laughs> And that's from like I just like can we hang out for a little bit and fuck and I get no response and it's like oh you suck. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah we we decided to parent differently than our parents and completely changed up with what the data and science shows us because you know we just saw that the way that we were parented was a very archaic way that was repeated through yeah. history with very little twist and so we took yep. the approach a little bit differently so. We're hoping that our children are more dependent on us to describe reality in a better way. Dependent? You said? Yeah. Or independent? Well, they have independent thinking, but dependent on us first before when. So let's say they have an issue with something on a worldview. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Go to yeah. us first, right? We would always have that doorway open yeah. to say, I'm going to go to my parents first because they have my back and they're going to tell me honesty with still an yeah. independent mindset that we could be wrong and we need they need to put their own twist on it as well. I yeah. define my parenting as guiding a ship. And uh, first, you guide the ship down a river where you just define the shoreline. You describe the worldview and you do the best you can. And eventually, they get so you know independent that you've kind of created almost this uh, interlocking sea where they can't get out yet. And then at 18, you kind of lift that gate and they go out to the ocean and you don't design shorelines yeah. anymore. They find a land and they talk to you about it and you say, Oh, you know, I've been there before. And you know, mm -hmm. this is how that works. And that's my opinion, but feel free to explore yeah. yourself and see what it's like. 
That way they have No, something. totally. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it was along the same lines. I just opened that gate earlier. I mean, I think by the time Abe was 13, I'm like, hey, I mean, you need to you need to get out there and see, you know, you need to get out there and be start your working. own person. You start yeah. working, you start bringing money into this house. No, I'm just child. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> There's some rocks out back that need to be broken. Get at it. <laughs> you like how many strings you had to pull to get a 13 year old down at the glue factory? <laughs> what, well, what else what, what else what else besides fatherhood though like yeah i, I was mean, gonna i was gonna say like say uh, books. Uh, i play music and i got friends and you know, work and all that kind of there's tons of stuff but i probably say you know like i my favorite one of my favorite hobbies is like video gaming i like to just relax with my friends and just play um that's probably one of my favorites. And then the other side of it is 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 just kind of uh, science, just understanding science and where we're at and philosophy. And it's always been been one of my passions in life, just being on the forefront of that stuff. It gets me better understanding. It's like, I want to know why everything is, but we can only know yeah. so much because people just don't exactly everything. <laughs> so you're kind of exactly. frustrated when you get to the fucking yeah. very edge of this shit. And you're like, like the latest news of like consciousness being a frequency that like our cells yep. are tapping into in our mind. And I'm like, yeah, but what the fuck? Like, I want to like, you know, like <laughs> freeze myself and wake up in like 20 years and be like, what the fuck was yeah. that about? You know, <laughs> to, uh, that so, makes me think like when I was a kid, I had this, I had this idea or what I thought was like a purpose was to understand the reality that I live in the best that I possibly can. And that doesn't necessarily mean that, hey, everything that's happening now, I'm going to know what's happening in the future. So you don't necessarily get disappointed when new information comes along. You you just take that information in, and then that becomes a part of this thinking of being able to understand as best you can the reality in which you live. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And over time, I think that's changed. You know, <laughs> I think my be- I think I'm more uh, more attuned into going into, you know, what uh, what inspires you. To me, at this point in my life, I think it comes down to sort of these intangible things in the artistic realm, even even in the philosophical realm of like. So, so we can we can understand a certain thing happened. These specific notes were played. This, these specific words were said in this specific order, and it made me feel this specific way. But there is no scientific uh, evidence, or n- nothing that would come close to satisfying the scientific um, understanding of what evidence would be but we still know we're experiencing it, you know, and we still know it's real. <clears throat> and that's the thing that I think of. That's the thing that I try to understand more along with, along with like, you know, I still, I'm always constantly watching and trying to understand new news that comes out about, you know, the, the re- actual scientific discoveries about the reality in which we live, you know, but like I said, there's not nothing. There's nothing that can ever be said or done that's going to prove why a song makes somebody feel a certain way. But yet it does. So uh, Scott, just to elaborate on that a little more. You're you're talking about not only taking in these artistic experiences, but practicing as well. Correct. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So 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 talk about how you practice this. Well, I mean, I uh, I play my piano every single day. And right. uh, it's sort of interesting. Uh, the, the way I do it, I don't, I never practice songs. What I do is I just sit down and I have, you know, I mean, I know, I know my scales, I know chords and I can play chords in any scale and I yeah. just start to play, you know, and it's, it's more about trying to discover something that it is about necessarily being like oh i want to play rock modern perfectly because right. to me i see that as like 
being a technician in music as opposed to being like sort of a creator or a composer, you know, right, people right. who create are doing it out of nothing. Like, okay, where, what can we do? What can we build out of this? That's what, um, that's what I, I basically had this philosophy when I picked up my first musical instrument and, and I wanted to be a musician, like when I grew up and I was like, I'm going to fucking be a musician because I, I understood that, I would just I would find <clears throat> techniques people would use and I would just apply them to my own and then twist them. But I never wanted yeah. to play somebody else's songs. So I've always played exactly. my own. Well now that I'm yeah. 36, all my songs that I've wanted to play for audiences have turned into fucking kid songs with fucking kid lyrics. They're about fucking rainbow horses and fucking <laughs> and moon and shit. I shit you not. All these, <laughs> Do like, you know how much money it is to be made off that kind of crazy. shit though? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my wife's like you should fucking publish an audiobook and i'm like that's well, sir, so much room, like so much work just to get that shit out i'm just you, you know what like um jazz guitar, you know? guitar inspired a lot uh metal metal takes a lot from jazz guitar, no, well, all, guitar. All, all rock and roll all, I mean, yeah, all metal, yeah, but metal so, it gets my, so my brother my brother was a death metal well, and I used to mock him and I'd be like, well, you can't fucking play this. He's like, I play death metal. I can play everything. I'm all playing. Yeah. yeah. One also, also I mean, to it with like certain like styles of death metal, they, they really did reject the entire jazz and blues ideology and went directly back to classical music to where yeah. you're using, uh, where you're using tritones for all your chords. So every time they're they're going to different chords, they're still hitting a tritone that gives it that fucking weird sound. Um, Unless you're going as to we're, band, as for like, blues, blues you will like blues. You're going to use a tritone as like an incidental tone, and but it's never going to stick on scaling, it. You know what I mean? Yeah, more scaling. Yeah, but you're getting, you're getting bands that are like adding more chords to the guitar. I think uh, I think Meshuggah did that. I think they used ten strings. Well, it's, oh, yeah. it's, also, it's, also, it's also incorporating scaling like something like one of yeah. my one of my buddies house to jam with them and he started playing the hungarian scale and i was like dude that's fucking beautiful man. Yeah. so it's like when you start incorporating yeah. other scales into your scale then people really yeah. take notice of like how did that make sense it's like dude, my reason is yeah, american man. standard scale that's been around for fucking ever it's boring as shit well like dude, my, my favorite scale is the double harmonic minor and if you don't know what that sounds like, imagine any sort of like Middle Eastern music. That's the double harmonic minor. So basically you have a one minor two and the rest of the scale is minor minus the seven, which is a major. If that makes any sense to you. Well, I do like a lot of like C. I don't sus speak seven. music. <laughs> I do like C sus seven and like B sus seven, which are some of my favorite. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I mean, yeah. Like any, 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 yeah. any sus We were trying to hit some bars and stuff, and it was a song completely. Out of <laughs> I was like, ah, I found, like what, I it. What, what I what I like doing is doing like uh, that's like sus has come out of jazz. So the idea you you can make sus chords out of so say you're playing in a major chord one three five, and you're just playing that. And then in, instead of playing the three, you're going to play one four five. Then you go back to one three five, and then do one two five. So you're you're basically just changing the middle note between the one and the five, and that's basically called vamping. That's what a lot of uh, jazz players do. What they just refer to as vamping. Yeah, but yeah. when you when you have a when you ac actually have a uh, a chord progression laid out, but like okay, it's one five six four five, and then what you can do is once you've played enough, be like, okay, what I'm going to do is use a sus chord and just replace the chord that it already calls for. Boom, doom. And it just makes it sound fucking amazing. Yeah. You know what one of my favorite like degradations of the musical scale has been? Has, has uh, by far, I think, uh, gone into this like um, chill hop. I'm not chill hop. Okay. Jesus Christ. Ah, uh, oh, it's going to drive me nuts. I was stalling too because I wasn't thinking of the fucking name, but like Dead Mouse and like uh, Dead know. Mouse. Yeah, Dead Mouse. Yeah, Dead, Dead Mouse is interesting because if you look at his chord progressions, he 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 goes into he goes into really strange places where he's doing. Uh, I'm at a lot of like altered like ninth 
11th, 13th chords. But and he just yeah, he'll twist it that way. And um, my favorite, like my favorite bands growing up in in that in that genre was Chemical Brothers and uh, mm-hmm. Daft Punk, right? And so I yep. like, grew up off those guys, and they would just take the weirdest fucking worst sounds you could imagine, repeat them four times, and that would be the fucking yes. song. And you would be exactly. like, the most epic shit. I have ever fucking yep. heard <laughs> to even harmonize and even get to some sort of scaling is crazy. Yep. They found this model where like we can take fucking airport noises that yeah. have no scalability whatsoever, tweak them slightly and fuck with them in a way that creates an epic song. I'm yep. remember an artist I used to follow a lot named Amon Tobin. He started Dude, Amon with... Tobin is fucking amazing. Yeah. He also he also has a fucking side project called Cujo. If you've never listened to Cujo, oh, you can really? look it up right look now up. and fucking listen to it. Dude. But um Dude, the I kitchen grew up with scene. Him. Yeah. I grew Holy up with him fuck. him making music for like uh, a Toonami and uh yep. Splinter Cell. So I, that's where I heard his music from. Oh no shit. Yeah, he did oh. the whole soundtrack to Splinter Cell mm-hmm. Conspir- uh, Chaos Theory. Oh, that's yep. dope. Yeah. And um I remember hearing his uh, one album, Ism, I think it was called. And you could tell oh, like he's using like nature and sound to make music, basically. Like he was making like the sound of like you could tell he's like using water to make this sound, but he was able to make it use it in a way to make it sound like music. Yeah. Weird. <coughs> yeah. Very experimental. Um mm-hmm. I don't know where the hell he was going with that because uh but he, he kept making albums like that. And some of them I thought yeah. were great, some of them I were a little like uh on. But then he Dude, uh, his latest album great. seems to be like something else entirely. That's awesome. <laughs> You know, to, uh, to, like Amon is fucking amazing. He's yeah, great. I really like his work. I really like his early work, and uh, like his new work, his is work is great. great. I'm Do trying we, to what that uh, Bricklage uh, was. Uh, that was his first full album, I believe. Uh, where is that? I think Foley Room is the one that had fucking the kitchen sink. Yeah. And, Basically, what he what he did is he's sort of like this guy. If you've ever heard of him, Diego Stoko, what he does is he just takes microphones around. He'll like go and like play on a tree and go and yeah. like take something and rasp through leaves. But he takes all these samples and just does a shitload of work. You can take you know you can take a sample of hitting like a stick on a tree and turn it into a bass drum with enough yeah. you know work. And that's and that's what he does and. Uh, who is it? Diego Stoko is the guy. If you've ever seen the first um, Sherlock Holmes movie with Robert Downey Jr., he did that soundtrack where it's like that fucking like crazy bass sound that's going. It's mm-hmm. Hans. I, I mean, if you guys don't listen to Hans Zimmer, but he's my uh, oh yeah, he's dude. my favorite. Yeah, I, I think everyone knows who that is. So, <laughs> favorite Hans Zimmer song? <laughs> You're so cool. No, favorite Hans Zimmer song is You're So Cool from, uh, God, what's that movie called? What's it about? Uh, Name the actors. It is um, Christian Slater and Rosanna Arquette. A True Romance. That's what it is. Hmm. Fucking amazing! That was can, like one of the first things Hans Zimmer did. Can you send me that was, link uh, when you uh, just so I don't want to forget? Oh yeah, 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 awesome. yeah! Absolutely. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I, it I just, just it's just so simple and fucking beautiful. I just wish the whole blom thing didn't turn into a meme. I do. I do want to ask Trav, what is <laughs> what is your inspiration? Um, bitches and hoes. Well, I think uh, <laughs> you know. Uh, Let's look at both sides on the scientific inspiration side, being out in nature, uh, adventuring, traveling, uh, meeting new people. Um, I feel like I, I experience the world in a very artistic way uh, regularly. So even, even when I'm delving into the scientific inspirational elements of reality, I um. I feel like I'm always pulling art out of it and artistic inspiration out of that. So I think I'm getting a double dose most of the time. Um, and then, you know, putting that into practice, uh, um, I'll use 
the piano, uh, my voice, my singing voice, um, uh, playwriting. Uh, t- so I'm I'm off. I'm a pretty prolific writer, uh, and I take a lot of notes and um, yeah. So so it my my thing with inspiration is something it's i i need to make sure i stay at keep my meters full at 10 out of 10 as opposed to be in 11 or 12 out of 10 because uh i think this is where you can your your in the things that inspire you can actually start working uh to your detriment i think we can only we, we all have varying levels of what our 10 out of 10 inspirational meters are, uh, our capacity. But, um, yeah, I, my thing is to always allow myself to be in states of stillness and calm and being able to shut off. I don't need to create a drum out of every single thing I see. I don't need to make a funny face every time I look in the mirror at myself or, or, you know, I don't have to always be uh, delving into my creative, the, the creative elements of my imagination, or I don't always have to be in this constant state of abstract thinking. Uh, I can just sit down sometimes and just appreciate my imagination uh, without getting, without allowing my inspiration to get out of control. Uh, so yeah there's a there's a i have a lot of methods for that um and then also like things like you know playing card games so 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 those are all the all the individual individualistic uh inspirations and i and i think the goal for everyone should be on an individualistic level you you, the goal should be to be at 10 out of 10 as an individual and you when you start giving up a little bit of your time and the things that inspire you the others that you have in your life make up you know the stuff that you're giving up uh from a uh inspiration potential so that's kind of uh how i view artistic and scientific inspiration that's why i when i founded penguin for the first time uh, the slogan became let art and science inspire and what it's talking about is you know uh, let the the determined cinema play out and let it be inspirational to you and and allow yourself to uh, uh, you know feel that inspirational um, pleasure of existence so yeah else we got in the room um metalworks how about you what inspires you brother oh um what's the best way to describe that um i'm always liking to find something that uh is new and like scratch that itch uh that's uh not just like the same old thing but something that uh is different i guess yeah or at least tries to improve upon what's already good. Like, um, my bar isn't always so high for quality. So, like, I don't mind if something has, like, shortcomings and flaws. But um, I always <clears throat> am trying to, like, look at some things. Like, uh, how can you improve here and there? Right. Uh, it's the best way I can describe this. So, like, uh, like I, I always go to video games a lot because that's something I, I like a lot. And I understand a lot more, more than anything. Because uh, I study them a lot, I watch a lot of videos and talk about them a lot, like how mechanics work and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, I'm like one of those people who, if I find like something lackluster, like if the writing and the story is like lackluster, that doesn't mean I'm like a person that just likes a, a good narrative, a good plot. I want like, and and it doesn't think gameplay is important. I'm like the person that likes a complete package. Like, why can't I have a game that's fun to play and has is interesting uh, plot that draws me in, that hooks me in, you know. 
And not everything has to be like Citizen Kane. It just has to be serviceable to what it is. Like, you know, I like Resident Evil 4 because it's one of my favorite games of all time because it's B-movie horror plot. B-movie action horror movie plot like works for it. It doesn't need to be anything better than that. It's silly enough. It's engaging and fun enough. And it works for what it is. And, um, you know, I'm always trying to find something that... uh like inspired, like uh, gets my my imagination going and making yeah. me uh, think about things, and mm-hmm. you know, something that isn't just like eating my time away and not making me think. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So, and I always like like watching or looking at stuff that also challenges you, uh, your emotions and your your feelings and your beliefs and stuff too. Right. You know, stuff that's you know you you wonder like why would you watch something that makes you sad because I should be able to. Uh, I should be able to enjoy something. I should be able to feel that emotion. And sometimes it's good to feel those types of negative emotions and work through them. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Um, and uh, what about, what's your experience with, with, uh, with, with the science? Do you, do you feel the need to be out in nature, discover, di- uh, discovering, foraging, uh, adventuring? Oh God. There, I, as much as I would like to go outside, I don't go out as much as I should. Yeah, so, and um, why do you think that is? Um, it's one of those things where it's a bad habit. Like, oh, I'll do it, yeah. and uh, I don't. <laughs> yeah, you put it off tomorrow, and you think you'll do it, and then you forget. Or right now, you know, I probably would be doing. I would. I used to do it a bit before, but because of this COVID stuff, you know, I kind of want to stay inside until this thing goes away. Well, if I do go outside, I wouldn't mind just avoiding people. It's really cold where I am right now, too. So right. maybe I think when the summer just, hits. What do you think about, like, sunshine and stuff like that that, like, helps you with your, you know, immunity, with your mindset and all that? Like, what do you think I really should get outside more and get into it. <laughs> I think sometimes I would uh, get my headphones or just walk around my neighborhood and listen to music. And I would just think about things and use the music as a, as a, like, a vehicle yeah. to fuel my imagination. That's the thing. Like, I didn't used to be really into music until I figured out I could use it as a way to, you know, basically get my imagination going. Anything I find something that makes my imagination like going is what I enjoy. And I'm not one of those persons that like has like a favorite genre of music. I'm like, I have a favorite artist. So when I find an artist I click with and I like, you know, I want to listen to all that person's work. And it's hard finding that one that you like. Oh, I think this person's okay, and find that one person you're like, I love everything this person makes. <laughs> yeah, it's rare. It's super hard to find that because I thought I really liked uh, metal, and I'm like, I like metal, but I don't like particular kinds of of artists. Like, I don't. I I'm trying to find bands that don't that either sound like uh, Judas Priest's Cain uh, Painkiller. Or any more bands that sound like Three Inches of Blood, and I can't really find that kind of singing voice. Do you um? Do you, I try looking into power metal, and I kind mm. of find something. There's some there's some Japanese something. bands that have come out that I've been really interested in because they really do reflect a lot of like the nuance of the late '90s metal, like rock and roll. Yeah. But it's kind I of also it's really, really cool. like Strapping Young Lad. Strapping Young Lad is one of my favorite metal bands, and I really like Devin Townsend <laughs> as an mm. artist. You definitely got to get outside more. <laughs> I think there's I should to be said when something that has to do with these, with these, you know, basically these plants and the environment and all that, it affects your mind. It affects your emotions and mentality. And it's meant to, you know, it's, yeah. we're, we're affected by plants. Well, I live in PA, everywhere. man. So the forest around here are just beautiful. Like yeah. all our trees and everything. When you're going on the highway and you just see all those, all the woods and everything and yeah. the big open, like, uh, you know, we have uh, like um, fields and stuff. They look great. I we like oils from. We have oils in our house from all over the world. Or yeah. we, we believe in the oils completely because they're such a part of our body. You know, it's such a part of our nature that we need them. We absolutely need them. Yeah. Stay healthy. I need to go outside more. Like, uh, I don't have like the tan like my dad has, and I really <laughs> should go out. I'm really. Pale. And uh, metalworks. <laughs> uh, how about uh, coming into conversations like this? Do you think they're the thing that drives you to conversations like this is fulfilling uh, elements of, of putting the scientific inspirational elements of your mind nope. into practice. 
my problem is, is I'm not really good with, um, how do I put this? Uh, I guess I wasn't really that good in my science class. I wasn't really that good in my, um, but, uh, but I mean the, uh, yeah, I mean the, uh, the, the, uh, the scientific, um, uh, inspirational aspect of discovery because you're yeah, here to discover like, something, right? Yeah. Like, uh, I like hearing people talk. Yeah. So I find people fascinating. Yeah. I always like to hear what they have to say. And yeah. I like to, that's, that's really all what I'm usually in these kinds of things for. Yeah. Cause I like, I like, I like, um, people and i like their ideas and i like to hear what they have to say mm -hmm. so like the science is a i i find the science important but um it's just not there for the science i'm just mostly there for the people and to hear different opinions and right yeah, but watching you know you know discourse and discussion yeah by by caring about the discovery of people and, and new experiences it, it is a scientific endeavor what yeah. you're what you're dabbling in you know um I always feel like I should be looking at like Science Magazine or some something like a, a science website. I keep forgetting what the name is. But sometimes I'll go on there and I'll be like, blown away by America. Yeah, I'll be blown away whatever discoveries they find there. You know? Yeah. I'm just right now. I just watched um, a YouTuber named uh, Ross Scott, and he was talking about an idea he want. He would hope someone a crazy goofy idea he had. He was like hoping like um someone would develop an AI that would uh. Basically, if it looked at a picture, it would be able to take that 2D picture and make it into a 3D level in games and virtual software. Because, you know, some game companies, they'll make these games and they'll limit to how like you can play them, how you own them, and then they'll shut them yeah. down and back on. And he wants to preserve them. Right. And one yep. of the things he talked about discussing this was like, we have AI that's able to look at like pictures and able to like get rid of like bad shadowing in them and stuff. Shadowing oh, yeah. that along there. I'm like, that is nuts that's crazy yeah. like how yeah. magical technology keeps getting like how magical look not like. just not <laughs> just ai like if you get into like photoshop there are like specific plugins that you can get that use yeah. ai where you can take a picture and cut something out so yeah. you can e even like someone's hair and it gets down to like such a granular granular level and then does like the gradation just right so you can take somebody at a beat shot with their hair flowing in the wind put them in another you know scene and it looks normal yeah you know and that's important. all ai i think yeah. what's important to know is that our imagination is what limits us it's not the physical and if yeah. we imagine ourselves to fly one day like the birds we do it mm. we imagine ourselves to augment reality with pictures we do it because as long as we have people forward thinking and saying i want this and goal have drive and this goal and they don't <laughs> stop well whether through their yeah. generation or the next it's bound to happen if that goal is worth fighting for so there really is no limit to our imagination and that's been proven through time and i always hate it when people try to limit like well you can't do this in writing or like there's rules for writing or rules for like design or something like that i'm like you really shouldn't view those as rules you should view those as guidelines and like it's it's not it's not that you can't do it it's that we don't know how to do it without making it bad so until you figure out how to yeah. write a certain you know you know what i mean like when oh, some yeah. people will yeah. try to tell you like certain certain things you don't want to do in writing i'm like i get what you're saying i'm just waiting for someone to figure out how to get around that <laughs> that problem you know because that's what it should really be viewed as. What's interesting, do, do you guys know who uh, who Dean Kamen is? The guy who invented the Segway? No. You ever heard of this guy? Did he, did he kill himself on one? No, no, that was the guy who bought the company. But the uh, guy who actually, like the, the actual engineer who invented it and made it, it's this guy named Dean Kamen who runs a uh, uh, an engineering firm out of Boston, I believe. But I watched this interview with him, and he was like, it was, it was so interesting. He's like, the entirety of human civilization has been, been uh, changed fundamentally by five guys. And he's like, Archimedes, uh, uh, what, like Da Vinci? But he just like lists off like all these like massive characters. And, he's, and, and then he breaks it down in a very like 
and cogent me. way of <laughs> no no he doesn't even say me he's like yeah. he breaks it down in a cogent way of like see like the discoveries the discoveries that these guys made is what changed the uh changed all of humanity for all of us for this amount of time you know o- over the over this period of time come down to these five guys figuring out what they did see i can up them and that's right there to go well, and that's really five more people that were important and that was their mothers uh, yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah i mean yeah i mean but that's i mean like yeah, that's, that's when you get into like a weird like extrapolation of it um yeah. but basically what he's saying is and it's not even saying like these people created something he's saying they these five people discovered something about reality and those discoveries about reality are what changed everything going forward because that they didn't come up with all, all the ideas, but they they came up with this under with this fundamental understanding of like here's how things actually work, and that that's the interesting part about it. And there's probably only a handful of people who actually come up with that who can get back to that far of the base of what is reality and say, here's how it is like Einstein, you know, like he got back to the fundamental basics of what is reality before Einstein, uh, electro mechanics and physics were two separate things. And then Einstein said, no, here they're, they're all the same thing. And here's this equation. And it's just like this extremely simple equation that ties these two things together. It's so fucking on that, crazy. On that note, what what removes like or what what puts down or weakens inspiration for um, you, Scott? Or for you, man? Uh I I think that's I think that's about experience. And that's something that can't necessarily be put into the same kind of basic equation i don't i don't think we're ever going to find a way to say oh the reason people feel like this is because of this very simple thing and all we got to do is look at that and it'll fix everybody i don't think we're ever going to have that well um i would maybe say a, a, a huge enemy maybe the biggest one of inspiration in uh, in human beings would be worry um and it's the I same think it's apathy and it's the same fundamental worry that uh, that actually played a huge role in our survival. Um, comes from the same exactly. instinct the yeah. instinct to worry to, yeah. you know, worry about our survival, worry about what's going to kill us next. Be being Extremely very careful harsh. about our environment. Um, but yeah. now we're in in such a different, um, well, I guess, uh, age yeah. where we this 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 worry mechanism we have people just finding things to worry about they're creating yeah. things to worry about because it, it, they're satisfying this fundamental principle and and building oh, block. also but do you also, think that comes you, from that might stem like from the hard wiring that? well do you think there might be a hard wiring that could correct itself over future generations um, through evolution, like this hard wiring that we have right now, since this change has come on so fast, where we used to worry about, you know, snakes and these kind of things. Right. And that's why we're always it's like getting into these irrational confrontations. But how right. long do you, I mean, do you think? Don't go outside. Evolve? The witches will get you. I know. No, do you think we could evolve out of that to the point where our worries become what we're actually experiencing? I think it well, would take a plateau off of like, I, uh, advancement, like things would have to stop advancing to a certain point, well, and then well, we would. I think philosophy has helped us to get over a lot of it, at least to a point where you can tell a big difference between a human being walking around feeling, uh, you know, right as rain all the time because they're not having to worry about whether uh, if the hunt is going to be good tonight. Uh, yeah, uh, you have human beings walking around looking pretty damn confident, uh, but but. It, it, there there is an element of like oh, damn it christmas is coming up and yeah. i'm gonna worry about exactly. it right mm. and uh exactly. and it's a very it's a new thing for humanity but scott one thing i will say the more we get better at mindfulness practice and and our 
our, in our conversations about philosophy of, about life and and also the is understanding of reality i think uh and and also <laughs> also understanding concepts like like determinism and allowing that to be part of your mindfulness technique to understand that um you know if you, you know losing losing a loved one experience experiencing trauma of of any kind there 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 is a humbleness in understanding that you know that there yeah. there was a physical property to how this all played out uh yeah so it's yeah the there, i think i think as our tools advance the more the more we and and i mean you know the realm of psychedelics and implementing that in some way might be some of the early stages of us tapping into oh okay this this actually allows us to through let's say a, a, a long a long period of microevolution kind of eliminate the worry bug as we see it as a bug not 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 eliminate all care but worry i think exactly. the goal should be to eliminate worry and and replace that uh void which will leave a huge void with uh with care and that's how i yeah. try to deal with worry isn't it sort of like just getting to the point where you like the amygdala just keeps getting smaller and smaller <laughs> well yeah it's 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 hard to think of what the what that would look like physically but uh yeah I think, I think, I think it's because we know people with like enlarged amygdala, amygdalas like react a lot more strongly to perceived threats. Right. And it's it's one of those rough things. Like that's I think society has always needed people who react strongly to threats like that. Right. But at the yeah. same time we need people who who take caution to the wind, you know? Right. <laughs> and like okay, well, there might be this threat of this thing, but I'll do this. And then all of a sudden, when I did this, we found out this specific piece of information that made our lives better, you right. know? Yeah. I think, I think one of the biggest killers of our time being in the alpha apex of, of Earth is ego. I mean, we see this many times before. How many times have our creations come back to bite us? You know, and and we're so pompous to install those creations without honestly understanding the consequences, uh, because we seem to yeah. move forward and, and consequences will be minimal. But yet, if you actually draw a Venn diagram of technology expanding and more risk being taken, yeah, you actually have uh, a larger increase in failure and and what it. A larger increase in how many people are affected by the failures um, yeah and, and, well, and, the, and, the, on a, and on a scale of the cost so uh for instance asbestos in the ceiling uh, lead paint you know things like that or the cost is it's huge very much so so uh, ego i think is one of those things that does not inspire uh and if anything it's a falsehood where you think it inspires but it actually uh, takes away from inspiration. Well, it sounds like a, I don't know if you've ever heard of the term analysis paralysis. Yes, so I have. This, yeah, yeah. So this is something that happens all the time in like research communities, whether you you get so caught up in trying to overanalyze something that you become paralyzed and you cannot actually like finish your work or act and complete what you're actually going for. It sort of sounds to me that's that might be what you're talking about, where you're saying the ego comes into place and like and it's got to be the specific way that you want, and you know you'll just reanalyze and reanalyze and reanalyze, and it's not coming out the specific way I want. Yeah, I think I used to have an issue with overanalyzation, for sure, and I, I still say I, sometimes I still do. Um, but as you get older, wisdom starts to play over that. Mm -hmm. You start to lean more on the wisdom than you do with the over analytical need. And wisdom tells me that I can analyze all day, but I would accomplish minimalistically what I need to analyze rather than seek that from one who has already analyzed it in depth and then bounce that off yeah. four more that are 
uh, far more uh, better at it than I am. Yep. I can well, not it. not only that, but also being. And then I'm called a sheeple, and then I just listen to other people. And <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean you you, you have to, you have to live off the shoulders of giants. I mean that is that is fundamental in our society. Like it, if you're if you're going to try and pretend you're making everything from ground up, you're a fucking moron, and you should probably just shut the fuck up. <laughs> Because you're not. <laughs> um, but to me, like, sort of the fundamental thing is also understanding when you need to analyze. You know, it's like understanding the context of this specific thing. Be like, okay, I don't need to worry about X, Y, and Z. Oh, but when it comes to W, that's the thing that I need to focus on. That's the thing that I need to, like, take it, take time and account, work my way through it. Because it's something that's not... I don't know, blatant, I guess, you know, I mean, uh, that, that comes with wisdom. You know, there are certain things that you experience in life that are blatantly obvious, but the reason they're obvious is because you've experienced these things 30 times before. And when you've experienced it 30 times before, it's not a hundred percent true, but I think you have a good basis to go on and just being like, Hey, okay, I can take that from past experience you would necessarily disregard it all because there could be like something that is different there, but you, you have a good starting point, you know? Uh, so to... I say, uh, be a change. Be a big, be a big one. Because of, uh, called... when you, because when you get so comfortable, you don't want to, you don't want things to change. I'm saying. Yeah, fear of yep. fear of change. Uh, we see that in in relationships a lot, where people uh, prolong um, prolong yep. relationships be, uh, for that very reason, uh, afraid of changing. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and and there is a lack of inspiration That's there. And I think and another we'll, problem also, you'll have also gets into like the like the realm of like people not going to a new job to make more money because uh, I've got a fear of change, you know, and like yeah, people do this all the time. They'll stay someplace for a long, long time where they could have had something better many years ago because they fear mm-hmm. change. Like you just sort of got to go into it. But I was also going to say um, another thing that can mess up society is apathy. When you just don't care, oh, and you just yeah. don't do anything. Well, yeah. oh yeah, but yeah, that's, and I think sometimes yeah. that that can drive you to caring about something that you shouldn't carry and shouldn't worry about too. Right. Yep. Well, I think uh, I made that point on like a show the other day. I said cynicism and apathy are not virtues. Uh, right. Yeah. They're vices. You know, I mean, like if you're cynical or apathetic. Those are vices, and you need to recognize their vices and not try to pretend it. Yeah, the, that it, makes you like, there's something, understand. There's like, a, you know. <laughs> yeah, there's a resistance to the truth there, uh, yeah. which is very, very. Uh, um, that there's anytime someone tries to resist what is true, what has been demonstrated to be true, it creates a cacophony of of issues. And, and oh, yeah. for, for, for inspiration as well, like how, it's like, how can you be inspired to, to pursue truth that, you know, if you really analyzed yeah. what you believe is true, you believe in things that haven't been founded, uh, to be true. So and do you yeah. have the ego of maturity to handle being truth. wrong? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah. when you see it like that trap, it's like the death of truth, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, for someone that I, well, I think if, if you do value well being uh, as a, as a moral principle, you must value what is true. Great. Uh, you, you have to, you, you have to value the, what is true because what is true is going to lead us to better uh, usages of reality to uh to benefit the the well-being meter of humanity um some people have different definitions of truth 
which is gets weird. Yeah, but the, the, you know, people can say yeah, like, but but we have to have a working label, and I'm talking about the working label I know, we I know. use in the in the lab. <laughs> I I know, but you gotta understand. Like, I remember having a conversation with someone, and I was trying to use um, uh, let's see here. I think it was uh, colleges or something like that as like a arbiter of like we could use it. Like, well, like like give the college the benefit of the doubt. And he was like, I think it was about oil research or something like that. And he didn't want to, he didn't want to have it. And I asked him, well, why? It's because he said, well, they get money from the government. So uh, what does that tell you? And I'm like, well, that's not, like, you, well, you have to prove that. You have to prove that if they're getting money from the government, they're, they're going to, you know. Yeah. So, so metal. They're their opinion. Yeah. So metal, mm-hmm. but, but that's also why, like, if he does, if he is suspect of these colleges and, and the information they're putting out, uh, yeah. it, 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 it's, it's scientific findings, the scientific models are independently verifiable. So he should just get up and see what, if these have been verified or if he wishes to go verify them, he can, or if he, he can look at other experts who have, who have tried to falsify the findings and see what he comes up with. I'm going to yeah. go eat. Have a good night. All right. Peace out, Grim. I, I know what you're saying, but yeah. Some people just don't want to do that. They just they're just too stubborn, or they're just going to go listen to Alex Jones, and that's who he was. He was listening. Yeah, but those yeah. but those people are those people right off the bat are in bad faith. Yeah, right? so 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 they're mm. they're they're already uh, are, in a position yeah. of of not of not knowing how we determine what is true. Not not even understanding that, and they've also glommed on to an idea without skeptically looking through the philosophy of what is true like yeah. it, it you know they they've missed many steps um and and you're right in saying metalworks that people get very uh arrogant and self-righteous about truth they'll they'll say things like i know this is true and nothing anyone could ever say will change my mind how do you exactly. like that yeah it's like well <laughs> Uh, cool you just demonstrated how you you're a cynic oh, just and, <laughs> and uh and and arrogant and it's, it's ignorant cynical, cynical and apathetic yeah, the problem is i didn't want to have to argue with him because it was at like a family party and he was on my sister's like fiance well, yeah, sister? not, not every setting i'm is, like i'm just gonna drop it i'm not gonna bother yeah. not every set, <laughs> setting's gonna lend itself to intellectual discourse including when booze and other substances are involved usually yeah, it's just a good time to let loose and be inspired in the yeah moment. i'm just like you know what he, he, he <laughs> you want to let, 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 let it go really but damn yeah. it sucks because that guy is a father and i'm what, like oh what was that scott I was just saying, you know what really helps metal just call people cunts like that really <laughs> <laughs> i'm not gonna do that it's not gonna help there yeah. i'm not it's, it's like not, you know it's, it's like but but you have to say it very very nice. You be like, you know, I I know what you're saying there. Uh, I I see that you're okay. using English oh. words, and I and I just think that you're being a cunt. <laughs> and I know there are sounds coming out of your vocal cords and reverberating out of your mouth. <laughs> oh my god! My sister would give me like the fucking evil eye. <laughs> see it now it's like what are you doing <laughs> that just reminded me of a magic card called evil eye of orms by gore <laughs> classic oh god yeah yeah oh, let's oh see. people are so frustrating sometimes but you love them and sometimes you don't yeah well like, i've I, I found I found the older I've got, I'm, I'm less bothered by people. Yeah. yeah. I, I've noticed that too. You know, I think when you're young, you're like, fuck, everything's got to be my fucking way. That's why like, you know, kids who are like 16, 17, 18 read Ayn Rand and they're like, oh, this makes a oh, ton of sense. <laughs> but like, if you're 26 and you're still a thing that makes a ton of sense. <laughs> you're probably doing something wrong well i think uh, i think scott what you're actually talking about in simplistic form is when people's worry starts to die i think as you get older you start realizing 
I don't need to worry about when I'm going to go to the grocery store next. I just fucking do it. Yeah. You know, you just, and it's kind of an even more colloquial way to say it is the people that have an easy time saying, well, fuck it. Let's just go. Let, like, let's go camping. Let's go. It's kind of just like, fuck it. Like, like there's yeah. nothing to, there, there, there is nothing to worry about here. We're either going to do this thing or not. This thing is going to happen or not. And, and, you know, it, take time to deal with things that require acceptance and to go through the, the, the whole range of human emotions. But, um, do, like, like let worry die. I tell people this all the time. Uh, but, but. I always, always make sure I say that doesn't mean you don't care about anything anymore. Care must replace exactly. where you used to worry. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's I mean that that specifically reminds me of that fucking latest Sam Harris podcast. I don't know if you had listened to it. Oh, I haven't heard um, his latest. What what was it? It was, uh, it was along the lines. He's like he was talking about the capital riots, and he's like. He goes in this thing. It's like, if you think what I'm telling you with my meditation podcast is that you should just be a hippy dippy and fuck and not yeah. care about things that are happening. You're taking everything I'm saying completely yeah. fucking wrong. Yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. It's uh, it's people, people did this in the seventies when they, when this type of, these type of well being philosophy came out, it's like, I just need to be out in the grass, man, and being well, Smoke, oh, smoke this joint. If I feel well, have some heroin. It's all about feeling well. How about the cocaine? Maybe deal a yeah. bit. Oh yeah, now I'm amped. I'm inspired, man. And then if I'm feeling oh, a little down, take- I'll just have a little more grass. <laughs> Let's think. All it takes is one really charismatic <laughs> heroin. <act. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome, <laughs> dude. I've, uh, speaking speaking of charisma i've been re re i've been dedicating a lot of time recently well i'm 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 basically taking an audiobook at triple speed right now so i'm going through audiobooks very quickly um but one thing i'm taking in for more to wet my chops even more in in criminal psychology is is manson and uh man i just i can't i wish there was more more lengthy discussions and and more philosophical discussions with him because you know i uh it's it it's another place and i want to bring this up because it's inspiration day but it's another place i derive a lot of inspiration is human beings endeavoring to learn from the the nastiest among us um you know the ones who have done uh the nastiest things and why they did them and yep. was there any kind of ideological reasoning behind this? You know, you look at, you, you know, uh, you look at a lot of different cases. Um, I'm trying to set up a conversation with Robert Picton, uh, who who committed all the uh, murders of prostitutes here in Vancouver um, over over a length of time. And there was a lot of them. And then he fed fed the the poor women yeah. to their, their bodies, to the pigs. Um, but but. I, th- this stuff fascinates me and what, what I very much appreciate is humanity's ability to study these things and to overcome our emotional hangups, which, which actually ought to be quite large when, when it comes to what, yeah. what these people have done and how many people the, the, these people have hurt and, and caused trauma for. So, um, but that's a I, I derive a lot of inspiration, uh, but, uh, you know, through through Manson. tragedy. Well, fucking Manson, like he's different than all those other guys, you know, because his what he did was he ra- radicalized. Like, uh, like he, he he was like a parlor trickster, you know what I mean? Like, and I guess that's the like the one thing with Manson. So I've looked at it too. There's not like a ton of information on him before what happened you know so you don't necessarily know how he became to be the way he was well we have a we have a fair amount like uh you know it's interesting he knew the beach boys the beach boys got him into the studio uh he you know he's in and out of jail his whole life uh 
couldn't couldn't live by the rules. He uh, yeah. just, you know, and and you know, it's, it was a sad thing about him that I think had he been born at a different time with with let's say later on in history like today, I think the system would have done a lot better with him. Took care of him. and uh, and you know he. I think the artistic inspirational elements of his mind are off the charts, which is kind of interesting. Like he's a performance artist. He really, he really likes feeding yeah. off, off the audience. He's got a, he's got a lot of expression. Uh, uh, yes. it, it, he's, he's, he's pouring with emotion and, 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 and philosophical takes, even though a lot of them are, are, are just uh, kind of coming from like his idea of what's funny or like, like he, he, he's, yeah, like you see these weird, weird things emerge in him that are like, you know, he's poking fun at the man. He's poking fun at humanity. He, he's, he's saying, you know, and sometimes he'll, he'll bask in like, yeah, I don't, I don't need to kill anybody. I think it, I think it up here and then it happens, you know, he's, to, to, I, I guess to a job. I think he got offered a job at Fox News, and he said, "Like, I don't want to work here. This is a new kind of person. I don't want to stay here. Well, he, I, want, you know, I got money. I got girls. I mean, I well, know. he had to, at some point in his life to work with a con artist. Do you know what I mean? Like, like he had these techniques of con artistry. You know, where I think, it's. Yeah. Uh, I think he was know, just he a good made, actor, man. Yeah, I, I you think know? he was." But I think that's that sort of mentality benefits good acting. It's like James Randi. You know, James Randi was a great con artist. The only difference was is he just went up there and said, "Okay, what I'm doing here's what it is." Right. You know, I think where the maliciousness comes in is when people don't tell you that's what they're doing and they're trying to do it for their own benefit. Sure. I think there are people who have those have these kind of abilities, or they're just naturally inclinated to it like the same way some people just naturally pick up guitar and shred you know like yeah there there are certain people who have that inclination and i think he was one of them yeah it's to me that's that's what i find inter interesting is the utter the the deeper psychology behind what he was doing because like how, how do you get the amount of people to join you like same thing with jim jones and uh yeah. uh david koresh you know like you get a certain amount of like you get these people to truly believe you you know and i think with jim jones and david koresh they are both musicians you know <laughs> so they so they like it like david koresh would like jam like yeah man we're fucking having a good time and let me tell you about fucking jesus and yeah it's like, yeah yeah you know, it's like I can see in you, you are chosen, you know, and like there's a certain amount of people that they hear that and like, oh, yeah. man, here's some really sees me. In. And it's inspiring to the to the people take, taking it in, especially if they are, you know, if they're if they're using a lot of substances and they're hearing this over and over again. And, you know, all of a sudden they yep. start like mumbling the same thing that he said. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Is fucking crazy. Yeah, no. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I think it's no different than the kind of stuff that Randy did, except they're not being honest about it and they're using it for their own gain. Yeah, I mean, uh, Randy was there to say that, you know, magic isn't real, folks. There's actual detailed tricks to all of this. Um, and uh, I don't even know if it wasn't detailed. He would go in there and he would like figure out what they're doing and then like fucking debunk them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Never totally. seen this before. I can figure it out because I'm fucking because I know I know my trade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah. that's god brilliant, dude. Yeah, man. Love that. Hey, man. All right, well, I'm going to uh cut it off there, boys. Uh I enjoyed this. This was a good uh inspiration yeah. chat. Um good talk. Yeah, uh, I but, listened to most of it, but y'all was too smart for me. <laughs> well, I'm, I hope you join us more, uh, Scooper. Uh, I really, yeah, I'm really glad you stopped by. Yeah, no problem. All right, guys. Uh, well, peace out, Scott. I'll I'll go take a listen to the song again. <laughs> yep, yeah, I'm about to uh, up the uh, next version. Give me like 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Got to cool. do like two. Cool. All right, thanks, man.
See you, Metal. All right, later, man. You guys have a good night. Yeah, you too. All right, guys. It's been the um, uh, Pengburn Hangout. And as always, let art and science inspire. Stay inspired out there. <laughs>